What's going on guys and welcome back to Command Point. In today's video, I'm going to be going over with you guys how I painted up one of the new Hearthian Salvagers from the new Gallowfall Kill Team box that's coming out soon. Big thank you to Games Workshop for sending that box to Shane and I ahead of time to do a review on. But before we get into that guys, we do have to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Into the AM. Into the AM is an apparel company making some of the most comfortable graphic tees and everyday wear items. Now if you know me, you know that I am a big fan of the 40k aesthetic, and to me that's two things. That's skulls and gothic architecture. So as soon as I saw the Midnight Fortress tee from Into the AM, I knew I had to pick it up. I'm happy to say I was not disappointed in the slightest. The fit was fantastic. It's probably the most comfortable tee that I currently have in my wardrobe, and the print quality on the graphic was top notch. Right now, Into the AM is running a deal where you can get a bundle of three of their graphic tees for $60, or three of their basic tees for $49.95. And if you use the link in the description down below, you'll get an additional 10% off. Once again, a big thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get to painting. So the model I was most excited to paint in this new box set was the Jump Pack Warrior. Now before we started priming, I wanted to go ahead and try and pre-weather the model to make sure all of the hard surfaces on it, the shoulder pads, the jump pack, and all that had a little bit more wear and tear to him. I wanted to go for a more weathered look uh, to this model, like he's been out exploring some kind of alien planet and he's been out in the wild for a while. I did this first by taking an old brush, dipping it in some of my plastic cement, and uh, stippling all over those hard areas. Now I ran into an issue where my old brush eventually started to disintegrate, so I wound up switching back to the, uh, the plastic brush that comes with the uh, plastic cement. Ultimately, this step was kind of, uh, didn't really work out the way I wanted to. I think all the weathering and all that detail doesn't really show up well at the miniature scale. So I don't think I would be using this technique again, unless it's on something like a tank or some kind of bigger model. Off camera, I used my drill to create some bullet impacts on the armor and a spot on the jump pack. And then I used my X-Acto knife to put some surface scratches on the on uh, one of the pauldrons and on like the abdominal armor, I guess we'll call it. Let's fast forward and we have primed and base coated our model. Nothing too crazy, just kind of painting by the numbers here. I'll have a list of all the colors I used to base coat this model below me here. Now we're ready to start highlighting the armor. For this step, I mixed Caliban green and Uriel yellow on my wet palette and started painting this onto all the areas that I knew would reflect the most light. So that's the edges of the armor, all of the fine details like the studs on the uh, armor plating and especially on top of the jump pack because that's going to be the most reflective part of this model. For our next step, I painted another coat of highlights onto the armor of this model, this time adding a bit more Uriel yellow. Now I use this mix mostly as an edge highlight, but I did apply it pretty much all over the jump pack uh, portion of the model, just as that's gonna be pick, that's gonna be the brightest. It's gonna catch the most light. With those hard surfaces now highlighted, it's time to move on to highlighting all of the leather bits. What I did here was just highlighted all of the top areas of the belt, and then I used it all over the pouches, all the edges of the pouches, uh, just to give them some kind of like wear and tear. For our final highlight, I used Dawnstone on the two black panels on top of the jump pack there, just to make that little piece pop. Moving on to the axe blade, I first painted a, a base coat of Army Painter Matte White. Then once that was dry, I applied a coat of Fire Dragon Bright from Citadel. Now it's important when you're painting this step, 
especially on a surface like this where you want it to be very smooth that you keep all of your brush strokes going in the same direction. Then I painted Mephiston Red all around the edge of the blade just to give it a little bit of contrast and make it look like it's cooler towards those outside edges. And this was followed by a highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. Now to bring out all the details in the green armored areas a little bit more, I went ahead and used Beel Tan Green, applying it into all of the recesses almost like a pin wash. Using Agrax Earthshade, I washed all of the leather areas on this model. This helped to blend the Rhinox Hide and the Mournfang Brown areas and make the weather look on this leather a little bit more believable. Continuing with our shading, I used Nuln Oil over all of the silver metallic bits which I had painted using Iron Warriors from Citadel. This included the bolt pistol, the exhaust on the jump pack, the axe, and kind of like the roll cage that he has going over his head. Next up was shading the face. So using Reichlin Flesh Shade, I picked out all of the recessed areas on the face, just kind of like under the chin here, and then all around the nose. I didn't want to wash the entire face of the model because I really wanted to just bring out those details, and doing that would just make the whole thing look like one flat surface, really. So now it's time to base the model. First, I applied a coat of Eschen Gray on the rock that he's leaping from. And this was followed by edge highlights of Dawnstone. Next, I applied Astro Granite Debris from Citadel all over the base of the model. And now, normally I would wait for the basing material here to dry, but because I was on a tight schedule to get this model done in time to, you know, make this video, I decided to take my airbrush and see if I could dry it a little bit faster. And just after a few minutes, as you can see, uh, it dried perfectly. I was really happy with that. That's going to save me a lot of time going in the future when I'm basing my models. After shading the base with Nuln Oil, 
it looked pretty drab and empty. So I went over to my friendly local game store and picked up one of these alien plants from Gamer's Grass. So these are vinyl plants that you punch out and form yourself. I thought the colors on this one offered a nice contrast to the model and helped bring some story into the piece like the salvager is exploring some strange alien world. And with the base done, all that was left to do was to gently remove the jump pack and glue the head into place. And with that, our Salvager Jump Pack Warrior is ready for action. I don't know about you guys, but I am super stoked with how he came out. I think he looks awesome, but you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you think there's anything that, you know, could have been improved on with this model, what you think of the color scheme, uh, any sort of thing like that. I'm always open to some sort of constructive criticism and, you know, that stuff is useful not just for me, but for everybody else watching the video. Now, once again, I do want to give a huge thank you to Games Workshop for sending this box to us ahead of time for us to make some videos on and, you know, do a review of. One more thank you. Actually, a couple more thank yous. Once again, thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. Guys, don't forget to click that link in the description below if you want to take 10% off your next order from them. And then, of course, we do have to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporters and our YouTube channel members. Without you guys, Shane and I would not be able to continue making these videos. Thank you all for watching, and we hope to see you again in the next one.